What's up everybody, Pumpkin here. So this is a video for a leader I never thought I would be making. Um, the other day I was playing against um, another person and they played Phil Evandrel and I don't know, when I see Phil Evandrel I kind of laugh inside, Phil Evandrel is kind of a meme. Uh, and then I lost. And my, chat, ent my entire chat kind of shit talked me for a while and you know, whatever, it is what it is. So I decided to try the deck because you know, I I'm always interested in trying new decks and what surprised me was this deck is actually pretty good. Um, I played a little bit on stream. I played it off stream, won like six games in a row, played it the next day on stream and just cranked out a bunch of games. And it's a phenomenal deck. Um, the biggest problem with Phil Evandrel, well, one, the Mulligan update kind of helped it, but more importantly is how you play Phil Evandrel. So, I mean, I'll take myself, for example. When I play Phil Evandrel, I would usually Phil Evandrel in round one because, you know, you just that's just... It felt natural. But the reality is, Phil Evandraling in round one is incorrect. You're just not supposed to. Um, to the point where this the play style of this deck is different from any other deck in the game. There, there is no deck that plays like a Phil Evandral deck. And that is, you play three cards in round one, and you pass. You play down to seven cards, and you pass every time, 100% of the time. Uh, red coin and blue coin. Um, this is because... Basically, you just get rid of three garbage cards or like your witchers and two other cards and you go into round two with a uh, fully stacked hand and then you play Phil Evandrel and your opponent has two options. Uh, they can either play two cards and pass, in which case you pass two and you get to Phil Evandrel in round three, uh, or they can try to bleed you. Um, and that's where this deck kind of shines. Uh, it can do very well if bled because it has a bunch of engines like King of Beggars, Smugglers, and um, Mahakam Defenders, and Milva, and a bunch of other engines. Uh, and it has Gabor. So a lot of the times what what will end up happening is they'll, they'll push you in round two and then you're starting to come down to your last card and then they finally pass and you take the round with Gabor. Uh, and then Gabor carries five points into the next round. And that that's significant. Five points in like a three card round three is huge. That's, that's game winning. Um, so it's a very surprising deck. Um, the deck is very good because not a lot of people know how to play against it. One of the ways you play, the weakness of this deck is if you lose coin flip, right? So you're on blue coin, your opponent's on red coin, uh, and you have to go first. Ideally, you play three cards, right? So you play something like, usually a round starts with like a smuggler with TA, uh, and then an agitator, and then witchers. <clears throat> uh, the hope is that after you play your witchers, your opponent plays another card and you can pass, and then they have to play another card, and you go into the next round uh, with 10 cards and they have nine cards. Um, but smart players, they will keep up in tempo. Uh, they will play very large tempo in like turn one, turn two when they see Phil Evandrel. Um, so this is gonna start happening more often. So I've kind of had to adapt my play style. <clears throat> I will sometimes play Mahakam Defender in round one. I will play something like Agitator on a Defender, play Defender, play Witcher, TA the Witcher, and then pass. Uh, just because I need uh, enough tempo so that they don't pass me and punish me. Because if you go into round two on even, right, if you lose round one, uh, seven cards, seven cards, they can bleed you for free. Granted, this has happened and I still win games all the time. Um, my guess is you, you can still win because you have carryover and because the explosiveness of this deck in round two is so great. Um <clears throat> So by no means do you lose the game if you lose round one on even. Uh, but ideally you don't. Um, because being bled for free never feels good. It puts you in this weird scenario where you always have to keep up in points every single turn forever. If you ever fall behind, they can just pass. So yeah, try try that. Um, if you're at lower ranks, this won't be an issue. The odds that your opponent's going to dump out a ton of tempo really, really early on is very unlikely. Um, but yeah, I, I guess you'll figure that out as you play the deck. So very, very important with this deck. Play three cards, pass. That's it. Um, <clears throat> it's going to feel really weird. It's going to feel really bizarre because you've never done it before uh, unless you had like a terrible opening hand. But like that that's what you do with this deck. That is the goal. You play three cards and you get out on blue coin and red coin. Um, so if you one coin flip and you go second, I usually play something like a smuggler uh, and then like two agitators if I have two agitators or like a skirmisher or a dragoon. Um, basically, I mean, if you take a look at the deck, you got six cards down here, which are sub like six points. These six cards, everything else is amazing. Um, like a war dancer with Phil Evandrel on it is a six strength card. Everything above that is six strength on play, other than smugglers, but that's an engine, so it doesn't really count. Um, 
So ideally in round one, you want to get rid of your garbage bronzes, which would be these six cards right here. Not not all of them. Usually I mulligan most of them and you always keep agitators. Skirmishers are you throw, throw away. I sometimes keep a Dragoon if I'm playing against like uh, Squatel or Monsters because they have movement to counter the Smuggler. Um, and I open the round with Smuggler, Agitator, uh, and then some other garbage bronze. I usually save the Witcher for round two. Uh, I never play Witchers in round one, uh, unless, unless of course they pass. If they pass, I take the round with Witchers. Um, but I never play Witchers in round one unless I lose coin flip, because if you lose coin flip, you, you need to play tempo to keep up in points. So uh, depending on if you win or lose coin flip will determine whether or not you play Witchers in round one. Um, it, it might not make complete sense right now. So in, in the gameplay I'm about to show you, uh, it, it'll it'll make a little bit more sense, but I'll go through the cards really quickly. So Phil Evangel, a leader you never, ever, ever play in round one. Don't ever play this leader in round one. This is round two leader. Uh, sometimes round three. Uh, if you, assuming you don't lose on even, uh, you can try to gauge your opponents uh, and how much, how many points they're playing. So if they open with like a two point garbage bronze, you don't have to fill a Vandral. You can probably play your Witchers, play like another card or two, and then pass and go into round three and use fill a Vandral in round three. Um, if they open with like a large tempo play like Witchers uh, or like a Spear Tip or Riders or something, you, you might need the fill a Vandral. Um, Usually, I always fill a Vandral no matter what against Monsters and Kraken and Crate. Both of these two decks are very good in medium to long rounds, uh, too. So, these two decks, I almost always fill a Vandral because the extra points are very, very important. So, uh, any other matchup like an Art, you don't need to fill a Vandral or like Nilfgaard or I guess Skoytel. So, yeah, we'll run through really quickly. Uh, Dragon, immune card, very strong. Very strong, straightforward. Uh, Gabor, another immune card, but generally you play this in round two for carryover. Very strong card. Uh, Uni Cairo, they're phenomenal cards still. You can put the Unicorn on Dragon, and you get extra removal Cairo. Malayan, um, I, I I should have said this a little earlier, but um, the, this list is Insomnia's, I think, 228's list. Um, he originally ran Cleaver. I wasn't a big fan of Cleaver because Cleaver's not very good in a short round three, so I added Malayan, you're more than welcome to play Cleaver if you'd like. So, um, the, the Cleaver boosts Gabor, Malayan boosts Milva. I prefer Malayan, but uh, yeah, you can do whatever you want. Um, so Malayan, very strong removal. King of Beggars, very similar to um, Smugglers, but it boosts the lowest ally. Uh, I generally don't love playing this card in round one. I usually like to play the Smugglers in round one, my go-to like uh, boosting engine simply because if I play King of Beggars as my first card and I have an Agitator or a Skirmisher in hand, it boosts that card first. And because I'm very, very rarely keeping that uh, either of those two cards in round two, uh, I never play King of Beggars in round one. It's just usually not even worth it. So usually only Smugglers in round one. Very rarely King of Beggars. Unless, of course, I have no Agitators and no Skirmishers in my hand. Ida, strong um, artifact removal. It works with Mova. It's an elf. Um, very straightforward. You can remove an artifact if they play an artifact, but most of the time you're just boosting a unit by three, uh, and you can use this to reproc or restart up your defenders if they get damaged. Sheldon Skaggs, this card is phenomenal if you draw it. Um, <clears throat> ideally, you throw your agitators on this um, with Phil Evangel and a few boosts. You can get this up to like 10, and you start smacking things for 10. It could be a 20 point card. This card is. If you draw this in your opening hand or by round two with Phil Evangel, this card does a ton of damage. One of the strongest cards in the stack if you draw it early on. Siren, just a strong lock. It, it can't help to have an extra lock. Uh, Witchers, these cards are very good for round one if you lose coin flip for tempo. Otherwise, it kind of helps prevent getting bled in round two uh, when you dry pass. So very, very strong in round two. Mova, a nice strong engine. Um, don't play this too late. Don't don't make the mistake of like holding on to this and waiting and waiting and waiting. Play this kind of early if you think your opponent's going to bleed. You can generally gauge if they're going to bleed depending on the deck they're playing. If they're playing monsters, they're going to bleed. Um, and you don't want to be playing like a four-point Milva like, six or seven cards into the round. That's pretty bad. So uh, I usually, in round two, I'll open with Witchers um, and then I'll get an engine going, like a Hawker Smuggler and then like a Milva uh, just because... If you get bled 2 out, you lose. So try to avoid that. Um, and that that's just something you're going to figure out with time as you play the deck. Hawker Smuggler, very strong engine. Um, this is the type of engine where you just smack it down really fast, really early. Uh, if it dies, if it gets moved, removed or like locked, it's not a big deal. It's just there. Um, against SK decks, you, you never want to be playing this card in round 2 because they have so much removal. So don't be afraid to play this in round 1. 
also side note against like heavy removal decks like Squayatal or SK if they dry pass in round two and you have like 10 cards in your hand it is not uncommon that I play two Hawker Smuggler and then a Gabor uh, this sounds crazy like why, why would you throw two engines on the board well you're giving yourself carryover right you play a Smuggler you get plus one you play another Smuggler you get plus two so you're plus three you play the Gabor you have five points of carryover you get another plus two and when you pass you get another plus two so you're looking at what Two 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 one. So you're looking at seven points of carryover plus the Gabor. That's a lot of carryover. Um, that's just a free what twelve points for the next round, uh, and you don't have to worry about your opponents removing your engine. So yeah, uh, very often I do play these cards even when my opponents pass, just because I want the carryover and I know the engines will not survive. Mahakam Defender, another engine. Uh, every ally turn on turn end boosts self by one if this unit is boosted. Works very well with your leader. Uh, you can reproc it with Ida if you need to or uh, Unicorn. Uh, try not to play these too late into the round just because they, you know, they get plus one every turn. Um, one of the hardest things about this card is playing against uh, SK. Uh, SK is running Scorch right now and it makes it really, really difficult because they can line up Scorches so easily. Um, I find myself like, I still haven't found the best way to do it uh, when you're playing like Milva and Defender because they, uh, they, they both get like plus one every turn and they can knock it down. It's really annoying. Um, I, I think the best way to do it is like play defender really early, let it get up to like seven or eight and then play them over. But it just feels really clunky, but it might actually be correct. Um, yeah, don't, don't go crazy playing around Scorch. Don't like unicorn one of these things to like 14, 16, whatever, because then it kind of walks into professional. So it's just, yeah, keep that in mind. I mean, it's really frustrating playing against Scorch with uh, this kind of card, but uh, yeah. That's just the way it is. Um, so yeah, be careful about Scorch. Be mindful. If you can play around it, great. If you can't, try to minimize the damage. Oven War Dancer. Uh, this card sucks unless it's boosted. Um, and boosting this is not very hard simply because, you know, <laughs> you play Philavandral. Um, by round three, if you draw this card or you top deck it, you obviously mulligan it because, you know, if you've already used your Philavandral, it's just a three. Uh, another nice thing is King of Beggars will focus this card first because it is the smallest unit in your hand, in theory. Like, the Agitator and Skirmisher shouldn't be in your hand. Um, so it, it's nice removal. It's a good card. Very strong against NR. Great card. Uh, Dragoons, they're just good. They're four-point moval, or they're four-point movement cards. Very, very strong. Uh, they can realign your smugglers back up into the melee row if your opponents, like, drowners it, or they play their Dragoon or Bruver onto your smugglers, so... It's a good card. Um, against I keep it against Squayatel and against Monsters because of that movement on the Smuggler. This is assuming I have a Smuggler in my hand, otherwise I mulligan it. Um, I keep it against NR because they have a, a few Rolocked engines. I don't usually keep two. I usually only keep one against NR. Uh, Nilfgaard, I never keep it. And SK, I never keep it. So this is a card that you always throw away in um, Nilfgaard and SK matchups. <clears throat> Dwarven Agitator. Very strong card, works super, super well with Sheldon Skag. This is a card you really, really want in round one because you can play it, uh, it gives you carryover, which is very strong. Uh, this is the type of card that you do not want in round two because it's not great in a bleed round when you're getting blood because you're playing a two, which feels kind of bad. So this is the type of card you dump in round one. Round two, if you top deck it, uh, if you are if you think your opponent's going to dry pass or pass very, very quickly, uh, that's something you're going to have to gauge. Uh, you can go ahead and keep the Agitator uh, for carryover, but yeah. That's a judgment call right there. Skirmisher, this is another one of those cards that you always mulligan. You never want this card in your hand just because every other card in your deck is much, much better. Um, it's not the end of the world if you draw it. It's a five for four, which isn't that bad, or it's a four for four. Um, it has Gabor Synergy. It's another target for Agitator. I don't think I've ever put an Agitator buff on this because I just, just always mulligan Skirmisher away. So I uh, generally never keep this card. Um, so yeah, basically... Game plan, I'll go over again very simply. You play three cards in round one, you pass. You go into round two, you mulligan everything that is not... Or you mulligan everything that is a Dragoon, Agitator, or Skirmisher. Keep everything else. Um, obviously, don't keep multiple Witchers. Uh, if you lose Coin Flip, you're going to be playing Witchers in round one for tempo. Because you don't really want to lose on even on seven cards. Uh, if you win Coin Flip and you go second, uh, you do not want to play Witchers in round one. You don't need the thinning because your entire deck is stacked with gold cards i mean all of these cards are good and this so um yeah 
This is actually a really good deck. I've climbed to, I believe, 25, 25 Skoyatel MMR, which it's not incredibly good, but I mean, for Skoyatel, for a Phil Evandro deck, that, that's pretty solid. So it's, it's, it's a really strong deck. Um, I've started to see this deck pop up more and more and more people are playing it. Um, if you haven't tried Phil Evandro, I mean, everybody has him because <laughs> he's the uh, starter leader. So definitely give the deck a try. It's very, very strong. Um, the, the most difficult part about it is playing it correctly, which is playing three cards and passing. It's going to be the most bizarre thing you've ever done because no deck plays like that. But uh, it's very cool and it feels great when you end up winning round two, like a card up or you have Gabor. I mean, I've, I've won round two, like two cards up with carryover. It's crazy. This deck could just completely obliterate your opponent. Um, side note. This deck struggles a little bit against monsters because monsters is really good in a really short round two, so they can just smash a couple uh, really high tempo cards. So what I've actually found myself doing, um, if I have Gabor in my hand in round one, I play Gabor in round one, um, simply because they don't have removal. Uh, and the extra carryover makes it so that uh, it's less likely that I get two owed, which is very important against monsters. So my round one against monsters, if I one coin flip, would be something like Smuggler, Agitator, Gabor, done. Uh, if I lost coin flip, it would be something like Smuggler, Witchers, Gabor, TA, a Witcher, and then pass. All right. So the Gabor is very nice just so that, you know, <laughs> getting 2 out against monsters isn't a great feeling. So the, the Gabor kind of makes it so that they can't. So, yeah, keep that in mind if you're playing against monsters. Every other deck, you don't need to play Gabor in round one. So, uh, yeah, uh, a bit of a longer intro just because it's a little bit more of a complex deck. Most decks, it's just... Try to win round one. If you don't win round one, don't lose round two. Win round three. All right? Most decks are pretty straightforward. This one, a little different. So, uh, yeah, I got a few games for you. I hope you guys enjoy it, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Keep a stiff neck. Dwarves! Humans lust after our lady folk! Play against Kolomon, first game of the day. Ay -ay -ay. That's uh, not ideal, to say the least. I really need to hope he doesn't have a professional or he waits a turn. I need him to wait one turn on professional. Because I just need to get out of this round. And if, like, so against any other player, I would just play Dragoon here. Because, you know, they wouldn't keep up in tempo. The problem is Colomot's good at the game. So I have to respect that. And we actually have to play tempo because we lost coin flip. Otherwise, yeah, we're just... I'm gonna lose on we're we're gonna lose a round on even, which means we lose the game, so yeah, I have to respect it. <clears throat> I'm in no mood to talk. So hopefully this is enough tempo. We're up a few points. Um Yeah. We should be good. Professional not enough here. Uh is it enough with Roach? A bit of respect. You're not talking to Yurt. Ooh. I have to pass. I'd have to play an 8 here. Because Professional is worth 11. He has to play Professional, right? It's the only card that does it in 1. Um, no, I guess a Uni or Kyra does it. 
Hey, listen here. Listen that enough? Well. Yeah, it's enough with Morkberg. No Morkberg. Okay, it's not enough. He discarded the Witcher, but he's gonna have to play another card, which means we're not gonna get blood. I mean, he can try, but he's gonna be two under instead of one under. Someone told me you had a great brand deck. Um, I don't know about great. I have a brand deck. It's a miracle deck. It's not very good. I mean, it's fun. I wouldn't say it's good though. Pumpkin play Apex Legends. I hate Battle Royales and it's actually hooking me in. I downloaded it last night, but I didn't end up playing it because I ended up doing something else. Um, but I'm gonna play it tonight. Because, I mean, it seems like people like it and I've liked Battle Royales in the past, so yeah, try it. Can't be that bad. Kappa. Special prize. Just for you, love. If he plays another card here, I'll use leader. Otherwise, I have no intention of using leader here. There's no point. Because he's down two cards. Um, otherwise, I normally would have played leader. So the question is, do we king of beggars? How many gold cards do we have? Eh, only two. Uh, I guess Ida is useful. The problem is that the rest of these are pretty useless. So the question is, is, do we play the King of Beggars? Just to get the carryover. Because I can play two cards here. Because in this matchup, everything dies. So, this, like, I don't really like playing engines very often against SK. So I think it's actually better to play Cobb here, just for the carryover. The semblance of heart don't interest me. Alright, that's no problem. Cause we, we, we basically just get a few points of extra carryover. Cause very, very... It's not very likely that the cards live against SK. Let's get draw. Um, we need to play around Marauder. So we're not gonna open Milva. We're gonna open the, uh, Agitator. We've lived in isolation for too bloody long! Would you play one provision bronze with one strike? Yeah. 100%. Everybody would. You just mulligan it away. Very strong card. Maybe a spear is just gonna hurt. Giant guy? Oh wow. Okay. Get this going immediately. We're gonna be very cautious with my uh, dragon because I need to play around Scorch. Scorch is a pretty common card, so we, we need to respect that. When we play a real deck, this is a real deck. So the reason why you would play a one provision cost bronze at one strength is because you it, it frees up provisions for other cards and you just mulligan it away. Or for SK, you just discard it. Nobody skates. Got That's it. interesting. I mean, I guess it's the best card. Probably not gonna get better. Follow me, 
this way. So we have a slight problem. If I play Cairo, it walks into Scorch. Or it plays around Scorch. If I play any Square Tell unit, it plays into Scorch. Because Milva goes to 8, and the 8 goes to 9, he pings it double 8. against this deck. Uh, it's like 10.30 a.m. Or 10.40 right now. I guess Scorch is just gonna hurt. I don't know. There's not much we can do about it. Like, I, can, can, I, I can't play around it. It's just gonna suck. He'll ping the thing and Scorch double eight, but I, I just, I don't have a choice. Like, I can play Dragon to offset for one turn, but then he's going to be getting a Triple Scorch. And Triple Scorch is much worse than Double Scorch. Yeah. There's no way to play around it. Like, we could Unicorn buff it, but then it plays too heavily into Professional. And then he gets a Double Scorch on Milva and Dragon, so we just have to take it. You can lock your dwarf. It doesn't do anything. If I lock my dwarf, I give him the Scorch for free, and he gets to ping one of these cards for free. Lock doesn't do anything either. No, I thought of everything. Nothing I could do. What I could have done is played the dwarf much, much earlier before Milva, but that just doesn't feel right. But I guess it is correct. What's your finisher? I mean, you just play points. Isn't that every finisher? I mean, they, 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 yeah, it's Goetal doesn't have a finisher. It's basically just play points. I mean, ideally, this is your best card. Too fast for you, Dwan. We're okay if he has Wild Boar to see, because it's not going to get any value. So in the future, I need to play the, uh, the Defender much earlier, before the Milva, to play around Scorch. What do you usually do after streams nowadays? Um, what do I do? Ah. I don't know. Is it your question? Be trusted. <clears throat> what does Pumpkin do? Oh shit, I don't know. Um... Hmm. Oh, it's a different track. <laughs> <laughs> Ivan the Fourth, thank you so much for the five months. Yesterday was my four month anniversary. Apparently today is my fifth. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. All right, we'll play around the... 
Normally you boost this, but we're gonna we're gonna play around Wild Boy to see. We're playing around Arden. No, it's Wild Boy the Sea, that's why he left the uh, bear proc up. I think we win. Wild Boar is only worth... Yeah. Cool. I got a nice Scorch off, but... At the end of the day... Didn't matter. GG. Well, that's a, that's a, that's a fun game for first game of the day. Colomon. I mean, if he can do 4 damage out of hand, he can do 4 damage out of hand, right? I don't really care. Got business for me. I mean, he has 2 with this. He literally needs a Savage Bear. But, yeah, I'm okay with that. We're gonna go this into double Agi into pass. New R2 is a snapshot. I'll take a look at this after this game. Wake up! Dwarves! Humans lust after our lady folk! So the question is, is it correct to go on Skags a second time? Time for enough! Ah. We've lived an ice So we can go in Defender. No. No. It plays into Scorch. Hmm. Need to play around Scorch. Nice haircut. Oh, thank you. We're gonna pass here. We're done. Cross the wide somber sea. I will sail. <laughs> Pumpkin new haircut. Yep. How long has this haircut meme been going around for? It's been going around for a while. I mean, that, that, that's a nice hand. We could drop the war dancer, if that's really it, but I don't mind keeping it. It's a solid hand. Ever since you got the new haircut? Oh, okay, that makes sense. Price. Just for you, love. Oh, good mother, right? Oh, it's a different trap. <laughs> <laughs> Your Valdi, thank you so much for the 30 months. Welcome back. Thanks, man. We're playing this because I hate Scorch. I mean, I love the card, but Scorch is really bad for this deck. We're gonna get rid of it. Thank you so much, your faulty. Welcome back. Happy birthday! Thanks, man. Okay, I can't keep two Dragoons. If we hit a Witcher, we cry, but we have to take them all again. Because I'm not keeping two Dragoons. It's too bad. Oh, it's a different trap. Clawsy boy, thank you so much for the 16 months. I'm sure I've had this. I'm sure I already had this, but here it is again. Thank you, man, and happy birthday. 
appreciate it. Welcome back. Huh? Waiting for the thaw? I don't think I want to play this immediately. No, I don't. Not much left of that world. That's good. Why did he pass instead of ditching his worst cards? So when you pass now with more than seven cards in hand, you get extra mulligans. Um, so like if you notice there, or I guess not there in the previous game, but uh, he, he gets extra mulligans for every additional card he has over seven. So instead of having two mulligans, if you go into round three with 10 cards, you get five mulligans. Um, I guess you wouldn't really go into the next round with 10 cards. If you went into the next round with nine cards, you get four mulligans. We want to keep waiting for that Savage Bear before playing the Defender, I think. Yeah. Watch and learn. <laughs> Why do you open with Witchers? You gave him easy bloodthirst? Um. It wouldn't have mattered. It would have come eventually. Because he has Savage Bear. And I don't have any boosts in hand. Other than Don't Ida, but Ida was being used for RD removal, so like sure I gave him my like like he could have always played this at some point, so it, it doesn't actually matter. Nothing matters. Too fast, dude one. Leave the biggest unit up for skags. Hmm. What's this on one? We're never gonna use this. Onward, Just play it. <laughs> We're waiting an awfully long time for this. Hmm. I'll wait one more turn. Mm. Is it time? I think it's time. I don't know. I mean, I can wait as long as I want, but the reality is we're losing so many points every turn we wait, so I just need to play it. Let's get this over. Sure. I don't know what's happening in my chat. I don't know what it says. But that's okay, I guess. You always use last ping, right? This wild boar is gonna suck for me. That's okay. It's a 16 right now. Trusted. 
Venom. A little as melons. You're one dead thunder heat. I mean, he needs a 13. It's not a. Scorch doesn't do it. I actually think we win this. Yeah. No worries. Always glad to watch you be salty. Yeah. So, what are 30 subs and money? They're not real. They're not real subs. I mean, some of them are real, but some of them are not. Twitch is doing this new thing for like a period of time. So normally I would keep this because I'm worried about Witcher, but I don't care if I draw a Witcher because we're never playing it in round one, so we can always take the mulligan. Um, is this deck good? I mean, we're winning at high MMR, so yes. Question mark. I think this is really bad because the dice are rot fiend, so we open with this. Coexistence, my ass. Big subs. Well, it's because Twitch is doing this like new sub alert thingy or like streak alert. So for the next couple of days, basically anybody who's subbed for two months minimum can redo it and get their streak. Um, I don't think I actually, or I don't think um, streamers actually get any money from it. Got business for me. I mean, maybe, maybe Twitch is just gonna shell out a shit ton of extra money for the next month or so, but I highly doubt it. Because that's basically all the money they pay out for subs, they would have to double for that one month, and I don't think they'd be like 50 50. Oh, he already blew leader? Oh, okay. Uh, what do we want to play here? So we want to play a card. We you, Passing on eight is pointless. Um, cause you want to be a card up on your opponent. So we need to play a card. Uh, the question is what card is that? It's not Witcher's cause we can hold on to that and it plays around cards like Manticore next round. So I actually think we just play a word answer. Watch and learn. Yep. And then we just pass. It's just a second notification once, just for showing streaks. Wait, so you're telling me the first one counts? Oh, maybe those are all real. I don't think so, though. Because normally I get like six to eight subs a day. There's no way. And yesterday we got like 75. There's no way. There's, there's no way. There's, there's no way. There's no. No, I don't believe it. Right? Gwen's growing. Gwen's gro not growing that fast. Let's be real here. Um, so in this round, it actually does matter. So this is actually better than this because it procs once on Gabor and five is bigger than four. So drop the Dragoon and we keep this. I can't mulligan again because if we do hit the Witcher, we could get two gold. Riders. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna mess with this. Elder is a very good bleeding leader, so. I'll respect it. We'll just play this. He'll play a card here. I'll go ahead and play the Agitator. That's a pretty low tempo card. There's a decent chance he passes. Wake up, dwarves! Um, Humans lust after our lady folk. Should just keep talking this. So if he passes here, the question is: Is do I get bored? That is always the question I have. Necro on egg. I mean, it's five carryover. It's probably correct. That's kind of dicey, isn't it? All right, so we just have to keep up in points now, and we win. This is pretty good. It's <laughs> pretty sizable card, I would say. What is this? Five, six, seven, eight, thirty. Elven <laughs> they run more Cyclops, so I'm gonna keep holding on to the Gabor. I'll play in a couple cards. Jeez, he drew pretty well too. I mean, we both drew well, but he drew well too. Oh, that's good.
I could play Ida, I guess. I guess playing. Uh, could you play Art? Yeah, uh, some people play Frightener. Uh, should I play around Fork? There's no way he plays Fork Tail. Follow me this way. I want to see a Cyclops. Uh, okay, I mean, we can play this. We have time. So, is this my play? Because, like, if this is his pass, it's going to be really... I, like, I don't want to play a six-point good board next turn. I think we play it here. Like, if he kills it, he kills it. We're still up a card. It's not the end of the world. Like, if he could Cyclops this into this, which would suck. Oh boy. Okay. Um, points. That's a lot. Oh, shit. I don't have a 17. <laughs> F? No, we don't lose. We still have Gabor. And he potentially plays one more card here. Right, so we still get the carryover and we get to keep, keep these cards. What is this worth? Five, six, seven, eight. The time of the white frost and white light. I mean, we're fine. No. We're up a card. Or, oh, or... it's a different trap. <laughs> Quip to Importa. Thank you so much for the tier one sub. So why is that one different from the other ones? What's the difference? What does the star mean? It means VIP? What? No, it doesn't. I mean, maybe it does. Does it mean VIP? I don't think so. New subs are stars? Oh, maybe question mark? I don't know. I'll be done. So you can kill this with uh, Manticore 100%, Rot Fiend 50 50. <laughs> He can wipe my board if he wants, but, I mean, there's nothing we can do about it. He can sack the Manticore into the uni to kill the six, which is really strong. Not much I can do about it. I mean, I guess I could have waited one turn. What is this? Malayne? For four? You get the seven, Best right? One. So what's the correct line to hit the Manticore? If we hit the Manti, it goes down to two. I think this is correct. Ah, yeah, I should have finished my paint. Are you going to be at Gwent Masters? If CDPR wants to pay for my plane ticket and accommodate all my costs, sure. So probably not. So the last card is, um... Karen? Karen is where... Oh, okay, I guess I can play. Okay, so we won again. Cool. Cool, cool, cool.